In 1923, my parents, Doug and Grace Corcoran, set out on an adventure of a lifetime. As a young newlywed couple, they had no idea the impact they would have on my family, the Chinese people, and perhaps the world. I would like to tell you some of their story as I've heard it told by my mother and her dear friends Oswald and Irene Golder. Shortly after graduating from medical school, my dad and mom decided to become missionaries in China. In those days, travel was slow, times were uncertain, and the risk was great. That didn't dissuade them one bit. Serving the poor in China was God's calling for their lives, and they were eager to fulfill that purpose. In September 1924, Doug and Grace graduated from a college of missions and sailed to China for the first time. After weeks of travel, they arrived in Peking, now known as Beijing, and began language training. From there, they set off to their new home and ministry in Hefei, located in the Anhui Province. The great American philanthropist John D. Rockefeller had an interest in China and its severe poverty. In the early 1900s, he donated monies for a hospital compound, our home. And nurses' quarters. He also helped build a church, a school, and another compound for missionaries. In those days, China was full of riots and unrest, governed by warlords. Young soldiers took over Nanking, and many foreigners and missionaries were tortured and killed. Many left the city, fleeing for their lives. In 1927, times became so dangerous that my parents and my two older siblings, Phyllis Ann and Billy, had to leave Hefei secretly in the darkness. They bravely escaped with the Golder family and traveled first by foot, and then down a river on a small Chinese sailboat with five children. They fled China scared and sad. Friends, home, and hospital were all left behind. With nowhere safe to live, my parents eventually landed in the Philippines to help in the Viagan Christian Hospital. It was here that my four-year-old sister and 18-month-old brother contracted bacillary dysentery and died within days of each other. This tragedy would forever impact my parents' lives. Despite much political unrest, they returned to China on four different occasions. During those bitter years of bandits, the Japanese invasions, and early communist guerrilla warfare, long lines of suffering people were laid out on bamboo stretchers, waiting to see Dr. Corcoran, my physician father. Often there were 200 patients a day needing emergency care. My dad would use his X-ray to find a bullet in a suffering patient, or give treatment for torture burns made by bandits. The Chinese said, "You came back to eat our bitterness." Great crowds came to church and to the hospital. My father recorded as many as 4,235 patients being seen in five weeks. Many were sick with malaria and scabies. The International Relief Commission provided funding that allowed the hospital to operate. There was much malnutrition, hunger, and suffering. Mites covered entire bodies, and abscesses resulted. Sulfur ointment was applied, and the staff went to work scrubbing off the scabs. A baby bath clinic was started in the cold winter months when there was no way for Chinese mothers to wash their children. Big bathtubs were installed. Many mothers walked miles through snow, ice, and mud just to bathe their children. It was the first hot bath for most of these children. The clinics multiplied, and at one point, up to 600 babies were registered. Medicine and free baby formula were distributed, and many lined up to receive these free supplies. My mother, hospital staff, and even young Chinese boys went to the country clinics to dress wounds. They were the original barefoot doctors. Nurses were trained, and the hospital staff grew in numbers and expertise. 
Emergency food supplies were shipped in from America and hundreds of large 50-pound sacks were unloaded from trains and hand carried to their compound. There were no trucks, only manpower. Much needed food was on the way. Cracked wheat was prepared and helped feed scores of hungry Chinese children and orphans. Most had no place else to turn. They were thin and often malnourished. What an amazing time this was to bless so many starving boys and girls. The winters were long and cold and the children desperately needed anything we could provide for them. Bales of used clothing arrived from the Red Cross and the missionaries carefully divided warm coats among the most needy. So many parents had no means of money to provide for their young children and were grateful to receive our help. Sadness often turned to smiles and that was the best payment we could ever receive. But later, our own sadness would come. Times were changing and China was again in turmoil. Governments were fighting and the poverty in China was great. It was with sorrow I remember giving away my belongings and even my dolls. Foreigners and missionaries needed to leave or face imprisonment, torture, or death. Women and children were sent back to America for safety while the men, including my father, stayed behind hoping to retain what they had worked so hard to build and restore. My parents were later reunited prior to World War II. Doug and Grace Corcoran devoted 26 years to serving China, the Chinese people, and the God they loved. And so, it was with regret and many fond memories that they left a country they cared so much about.